Okay, we have here today a really interesting viewer suggested integral. We've got the integral of x to the fourth over x to the sixth plus one dx. Thanks to Santiago Ortiz Quintero who suggested this problem. Thought it was a really interesting integral and good for a video. So let's get started with this. So first thing I did, it looks pretty easy. And so I was looking for some kind of simple u substitution. I wanted to see if what would happen if u equals x squared or what if we use x cubed? What if we just made the whole denominator u? None of those things seem to work. Those all looked really complicated. So what I had to do is I abandoned all those u substitutions and I started looking at factoring this. And what I found is that I could actually factor this into a few smaller, break it up into a few different integrals that I can do that are a little bit easier. So I think before I get into the algebra and all the factoring, what I wanna do is establish three integrals, three easier integrals that I can do, and we'll use those as tools. And so after we establish that, then we'll try to factor this into those three integrals. Okay, so I've put my main or goal integral over here to the right, and we'll just call that one i to keep track of it for later. And then the first integral I wanna solve, we'll, we'll call a, which is gonna be the integral of x squared over x to the six plus one dx. Kind of similar to this, but you notice this is gonna be quite a bit easier. We can do a u substitution here, and we'll do these kind of quick just because we wanna get back to the main course. So we'll call u x cubed, and then our du is going to be 3x squared dx. Now I can create that same du in our numerator if I just add a 3 here and multiply a 1 third. So rewriting this integral, our a is going to be uh, 1 third du on top. So we notice that x to the 6 is just x cubed squared. So we'll write this as u squared plus 1. And then integrating this, we're just going to have 1 third tan inverse of u, but I'm just gonna back substitute right away and put in our x cubed. I'm not gonna, well, there's a plus c if you want it. Okay, now our second integral here we'll call b. That's gonna be the integral of x squared plus one over x to the fourth minus x squared plus one. I've done videos very similar to this kind of problem. Um, I think I've done a couple and we'll do the same kind of technique where what we wanna do is the factoring doesn't work that great the way we have it here. But what we can do is multiply a one over x squared on the numerator and denominator, and this will transform it a little bit. So multiplying this in here, we're gonna have one plus one over x squared. And then multiplying this in here, we're gonna have x squared uh, minus one plus one over x squared. And then this allows us to do some nice factoring using this. What we can do is, we'll do this kind of quick again, so we can take, in the denominator, we'll look at x to the minus one over x squared. Now if you square that out, you get x squared plus one over x squared minus two, you have a minus one. So if we add a one here, you notice this is exactly equal to this, and we haven't changed the expression. And the reason this is so nice is we're again set up for a u substitution. So this thing's gonna be our u. So we'll say u equals x minus x minus one over x. Then let's take the derivative of this. So du, derivative of x is one. Now we can look at this as x to the minus one. So taking the derivative of that, we're gonna have a plus one over x squared dx. Again, works out very nice because our du is right here. So we'll, we can rewrite this as du over u squared plus one. Again, we'll use our arctan formula. And so this is just gonna be inverse tan of u. We can just write this in as x minus one over x. I think what we'll do, I don't know, we can actually get a common denominator and, re and put this into the form tan inverse x squared minus one over x. And that's gonna be our b integral. Okay, so now moving on to our third integral, we'll call this c. This is really similar to b. It's just we have a minus sign here, so it's gonna be integral of x squared minus one over x to the fourth minus x squared plus one dx. And we'll try to use a similar method, but it's just gonna be a little bit different. 
we're again going to multiply through by the 1 over x squared, numerator and denominator, so we'll rewrite this. Um, so multiplying this, and we're going to have 1 minus 1 over x squared. And then here we're going to have x squared minus 1 plus 1 over x squared. Now because the sign is different here, we need to do our factoring a little bit different. So instead of factoring it as x minus 1 over x, we're going to factor this as x plus 1 over x. Now if you multiply this out, you notice we get x squared plus 1 over x squared plus a 2. And then we have minus 1 there, so in order to cancel out love, so we need to subtract off our minus 2, minus 1. But then this is going to be a minus 3 over here, and so that's why it's a little more sticky. Okay, and so now we can do our u substitution, making this our u. So u is going to be x plus 1 over x. Then our du is going to be derivative of x is 1. Derivative of this is actually going to be minus 1 over x squared dx. Again, we have that in our numerator. So rewriting this and making the substitution, we're going to have du in the numerator, u squared, minus 3. I'm just going to rewrite this minus 3. We can write this as square root of 3 squared. Now we have this in the identical form to what we have here on the right, where we can integrate something of this form, and we get minus 1 over a hyperbolic inverse tangent u over a. So we can just kind of match that and use this. So we'll have minus 1 over square root of 3 hyperbolic inverse our u over the square root of 3. And now I just need to back substitute here. So we're going to be left with minus 1 square root of 3 hyperbolic tan inverse um, our u, which is x plus 1 over x. You know what I'm going to do? Let's just rewrite this and get a common denominator. So we'll, have, we'll write this as x squared plus 1 square root of 3 x. Okay, so now I've done a whole bunch of work. We've already done three integrals, but the good news is we've already done all the integration. So from here, it's pretty much algebra so that we can use these three values that we found on the right. So the first thing I wanna focus on is just this x squared plus one and see how we can factor that. So what I'm gonna do is, let's write our x to the six plus one a little different. We can write this as x squared cubed plus one. Let's just make a substitution for x squared just so we can see this clearly. So we write it as t cubed plus one. So from here we can just break this, we can factor this as the sum of two cubes and we can write this as t squared minus t plus one. But t is just x squared, so what we've really done is factor this as x squared plus one, x to the fourth, just plugging x squared in for the t, minus x squared plus one. So then what I want to do is let's rewrite our integral now using it broken up this way. So in our denominator, we're going to have x squared plus 1, x to the fourth minus x squared plus 1, dx, and we'll have our x to the fourth here. But then I want to do a little something to make this a little more user friendly. So what I'll do is I'm going to subtract a 1 here and add a 1. And then I think we can do some more with this. Now the reason for this little trick here is because you notice x to the fourth minus one, now we've got a difference of two squares. So we can write this again, or for a difference of two squares, we can write that as x squared plus one, x squared minus one, but don't forget this plus one over here. And now you see from here, we can break this into two integrals and we can get some cancellation and we can make some more progress. Okay, and you see that all we've done is just split this into two integrals now. I just put this denominator back to x to the six plus one. These are interchangeable, right? Because this x to the six plus uh, these denominators are the same, so I can switch between those for now. So focusing on our first integral, we can cancel x squared plus one here. And what we notice is we have this is the same as our c value here. So we've actually found we know what we know what this piece is. So we've actually reduced our integral to where we just need to focus on the integral of one over x to the six plus one dx. So from here, let's just focus on this piece, our one over x to the six plus one. And what I'll do, I'm gonna put it back into that form we had before. So we'd really like to do some more canceling with x squared plus one. So let's actually create an x squared here, but so that we're not changing it, we can uh, subtract an x squared. 
And so we're set up to do some, like a very similar trick to what we just did in the previous board. So we can split this into two integrals again. Okay, then now breaking this into our two integrals, we notice that here we can cancel here. And so we're just gonna be left with one over x to the fourth minus x squared plus one. Let's deal with that in a second. But what we notice here is, again, this is x to the sixth plus one, and this is actually the same as a. So this is, we know this value because we found that earlier, so this is gonna be our a integral. Okay, so keeping track of what we've done now, we've reduced to where we know our c and our a, but we just need to find this integral right here in the middle. Okay, so now just focusing on this part of the integral, what we wanna do, we're in kind of a predicament the same way we were before, where we don't have anything up here to do, we don't have a good u substitution or a good method of factoring. What we can do is we wanna use these b and c integrals. These have a symmetry that's gonna help us out. So what I'm gonna do is actually, let's just do it and see what happens. So, so I'm gonna do is write this as x squared plus one minus x squared minus one using our numerators from b and c. Now you notice if when we distribute our minus sign through here, the x squared is gonna cancel, but this value altogether is gonna be two, because when we distribute minus, we're gonna have plus one here and plus one here for two, which is different than the one we had. So what we can do is we can just multiply by a half, and now our half times two, we just have one here, so we didn't change the numerator. But what this is gonna allow us to do is break this into two integrals. And now that we have this split up, we can see this piece right here is gonna be b, and this piece here is gonna be our C. So this is gonna work out really nice. So this whole thing, what we're saying is the same thing as half B minus one half C. Now all we need to do is we just need to take this, we're just gonna grab this piece here, plug it back in here, and then see what we're left with so we can finish this off. And from here, we can just sort of combine like terms. We notice we have a C minus a half C. So we're just gonna add one minus a half as a half c plus a half b minus a so we have everything we need right here we just need to plug in the actual values that we found earlier from our integral so let's just finish this off so half times c this is going to be minus one just distributing our half two square root of three hyperbolic inverse tangent x squared plus one square root of three over x plus one half arctan x squared minus one over x minus one third arctan x cubed plus c. And that's not the same c as that one. This is, we'll call it c1 just to be clear. <laughs> So that's the solution. That was a really, that's one of the longer integrals I've done. Anyway, thank you for the suggestion. I'm gonna stop it here. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.